This diet fad doing the rounds has been taken to the extreme by this 25-year-old from Australia, Lonnie Jane Anthony. Lonnie Jane reveals on her blog that she eats up to 20 bananas a day, raw and in smoothies, but many commentators are branding her irresponsible. Okay, it's working. It works? It's working. We're on. There's a little fruit baby there. <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's a fruit baby, a smoothie baby in there. <laughs> And I just wanted to welcome you and see how you're feeling and just thank you for being here. Yeah, for sure. I'm feeling awesome. Yeah, and you're looking awesome. I feel good. I'm a little, a little bit a little bit sort of losing my voice a bit from just doing interviews and talking on the phone and being really busy still, but yeah, I can I can cope with that because I'm carved up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, good one. Yeah, so yeah. like how is all this hype? I couldn't believe it. Like you did this interview and then all of a sudden it's just everywhere. I know, I didn't, I was not expecting it at all and I definitely didn't do it, you know, to put it, to put it out there and put my face and my name out there, you know, I actually was like, oh, I wish I didn't use my last name, but anyway, it doesn't matter. The media, the media just take parts of whatever you say and, and make it into their own, you know, and if they can make it as negative as they possibly can to, to get that audience, then they, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. So um, I wasn't phased one bit by the by the negativity that came out of it because I feel like there's way more positive that came from this than good. Yeah, way, way more. I'm seeing yeah. it everywhere. Yeah, and I still think that most of the people that say negative stuff are actually curious. the people that are probably even more curious than the people that are actually like praising me for it. Yeah. They're probably thinking in the back of their heads, oh, what? that obviously really worked. Mm-hmm. She, she does actually look healthy and... You know, and people are interested in it because it's like deep down we all know that fruits and vegetables are good for us, um, and and I just think it's it's that's just inspiring within itself, and the negativity doesn't get to me one bit because I know I'm thriving in health and I know what I'm doing is right, awesome. and I'm not silly, I'm not I'm not just I'm not on a diet. This is my lifestyle; it's every single day, and um, I just yeah, I just I just know. I just know that what I'm doing is right now. I love sending the message out. Um, this is obviously new to me, like to be sort of in the public eye a little bit, yeah. bit more. Yeah. But um, handling it well. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Like I am a really private person, yeah. so That's this why is. I appreciate this. Yeah, I appreciate this interview so much. This is the first time I put my. This is the first interview I've done. Like you know, I've had. I've turned down all the TV interviews and stuff because I just feel. I don't feel like it's a little intrusive and maybe I'm not ready. I'm not quite sure about it yet. I'm still thinking about it. We have still the exclusive here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> exclusive interview. <laughs> there has been days when I've just ate just bananas, but not, not while I've been pregnant. Um, I've definitely been eating, you know, I've been sticking to the raw chill for pretty much every, like most days, um, especially later on during the pregnancy. I just It just makes me feel better. I feel more energy, I feel happier, I feel emotionally stable, you know, so still lots of carbs, keeping it low fat, a little bit more fats during pregnancy. It doesn't affect me like it used to when I wasn't pregnant if I would go a little bit overboard with the fats because I feel like I'd need it. Mm-hmm. But that's just me listening to my body, like, because I know what I need and I know that if I feel like I'm um, sort of missing something, like my body's pretty good at telling me and I'm pretty good at picking that up. I love my potatoes. Me too. I love my potatoes. Dutch greens. Yeah, Dutch oh. greens. Oh, yeah. so bacon's really good. Yeah, Dutch, Dutch greens and sweet potatoes, pasta and rice. Yeah. yeah, it's good. How abundant is this lifestyle, really? Like a lot of people, I think they look at the lifestyle, whether it be vegan or fruitarian, and they're like, oh, it's just so restrictive. I don't want to yeah. do that. You know, there's no variety. And it's like, I, come on. Yeah. So much variety. We're not, but we're not as humans. Though. We're not designed for the variety that we have given to us either. Look at all the variety you go into a supermarket. You don't even know where to look. Oh, you don't. God. You go in wanting to make dinner, you know, and you think you go into a supermarket. You're like, there's just way too many options, and you usually end up going for the frozen aisle anyway. But yeah, you know, with this lifestyle, you just you don't need like hundreds and hundreds of varieties of 
tastes and foods. Like, and you just oh, like I love my smoothies, mm-hmm. and I have them every day. Like, but it's like people so people so people eat their cereal every day. It's like it's no different. Like you're still eating the same. Like most people eat the same things. The you know yeah every day. It's no different when you're on this lifestyle. Like yeah. but still plenty of variety. Majority of carbs, that's how I get up every day and, yeah. and, and you know, deal with this pregnancy with high energy and I'm not stuck on the couch every day and not just feeling fatigued and low, low motivation and all of that. Like I feel, I don't really feel much different at all and there isn't many pregnant people that can say that they feel that way. Yeah. So, yeah. That's an amazing, like, testament. It is because you see people like Kim Kardashian gaining double the amount of weight that she should. Yeah. And then end up with preeclampsia. And lots of pregnant people deal with that too. Like it's it's so well known and it's such a, a common symptom of pregnancy. And all of these common symptoms of pregnancy, I just feel like it's just not, it's not needed. You don't have to have these symptoms if you just, you know, if you don't stuff your face with all these processed foods and high fats and high animal protein. So I think, you know, yeah, like when people are saying, um, you know, I'm going to die, my baby's going to die, I'm like, I'm going to have be malnourished, my baby doesn't get enough proteins and fats and all of that. And I think, you know, like I love Kim Kardashian, but I watched her pregnancy and, and how she had her baby. I think it was like six or seven weeks premature. And because she had her liver was shutting down and she had toxemia, which is preeclampsia, so you hold a lot of fluid, you blow up like a balloon, and it's so, so dangerous. Like your blood is literally toxic. Wow. And if your blood's toxic, what do you think your baby's getting? So, but no, but there was nothing in the news about that. It was no one was saying, oh, Kim Kardashian, you know, treating her body badly while she's pregnant, like she should have stopped, all this stuff. It's just no one blinks an eye because it's no, so normal so in society. <laughs> you know, you, if you were to see a pregnant woman, walking along the street with a you know McDonald's bag or eating chips or ice creams or you know tubs of ice creams or lollies like it's just normal like it's people just think it's so normal and I I completely disagree I just think it's terrible it is it's and, yeah I just think well what's wrong with eating 10 bananas for breakfast like if that's if I'm feeling good and I'm energetic and vibrant and glowing and healthy and it's like, it's obviously working, like clearly. I want to I want to help other pregnant women be able to not deal with crazy painful symptoms while they're pregnant because it's just not necessary. My ankles, like, they're not massive and swollen and, like, I can still walk. And... Oh, what about morning sickness? Yeah, so I never had morning sickness. Wow. I never, like, physically threw up or anything like that. Yeah. I did at the start, I felt like a bit nauseous um and you know tired but that was more because I was working too much and you know it would it takes a lot on you emotionally when you find out that you're pregnant yeah. to to realize that you know like you, that you know your life is changed like it's forever changed from that moment that you that you find out you're pregnant and um yeah I think it, it was more of an emotional thing and just trying to deal with like the changes in my life and um, then more things like that, but yeah, no, no sickness, no throwing up, no being in bed all day, no swollen body parts, no except swol- your belly, obviously. Yes, except for my belly. <laughs> oh, can you stand up and show people? <laughs> <laughs> there's a little fruit baby there. So there's a, there's a there's a fruit baby, a smoothie baby in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what were you saying before that, like, when you um, you have to kind of, like, make room for your smoothie? I have to halve my meals. Yeah. Just spread them out because, like, I do have a small body. Like, as you can see, it runs, you know, a little bit smaller frame. So fitting in the 10 banana smoothie is a little bit of a struggle sometimes. It depends on the day. It depends where the baby is. Like, sometimes the baby's feet's, like, right up, you know, where my stomach is. So I'm having my smoothie and it's, like, you know, so it's like having a boxing match with my stomach. So it's like, okay, 
I'm just going to have to halve that one and, and have another half in half an hour. That's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely not, not um, cutting down on the carbs whatsoever. Yeah. Just have to spread it out. Yeah, yeah. Good on you. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And your I, blood test. Like you said to me that you had um, your blood tested and the doctor was, yeah, you're all good. Yeah, so my, I had on a blood test and he, he was actually kind of surprised because most pregnancy you always become a bit deficient in iron and your B12 and then some other nutrients. But um, I'm, I'm really cautious about making sure I'm never deficient in anything because I have been before. When I was a heavy meat eater, dairy and all of that, I was deficient in iron. I had B12 issues. I had vitamin D issues. I couldn't absorb zinc. Isn't it interesting when meat is meant to help with all these things? It's meant exactly. to give you the iron, the B12, and we're seeing more people than ever in the population who are actually deficient. And then that's, they're eating meat, so. I just, and, and, you know, people, people need to make that connection, and I think they're starting to, which is really good, because people are saying that there is a stronger connection with, with meat and dairy to ill health. Um, and it is people like you and it's people like me and Harley and, you know, all the other um, fruitarians or A1010 or raw foods, you know, whatever. Like They are sending a message out that, that you do not need to live on that lifestyle to, to be healthy because clearly like 80% of the population has health issues and they're living on this standard American diet. So there's a clear link right there to why people are getting so sick. It's not from heredit like it's not hereditary or That's anything right. like that. It's what you feed your bones. It's quite amazing that like it's in front of our faces, in front of the doctors' faces, but it's the connection is just not being made at all. It's like the fog is just down and nobody can see the truth. Yeah. And that's why, like you said, like we're putting the message out as hard as we can, you know, try and carve the planet up and make people realise that fruits and veggies is the answer. Whether it's cooked carbs or whether it's raw, that is the answer. And the more people eat that and realise, like, the more they kind of start to think for themselves. Yeah, exactly. And I think the, pe- the people that, that shun this lifestyle or that, um, you know, say, oh, you can't get enough from fruits and vegetables, they don't have the education. And even if they are nutritionists, no, yeah, uh, the yeah. nutritionists are taught a meat and dairy diet. And, well, majority of them are, unless you do a special type of you know, um, course or something, you know, that, that doesn't have a meat and dairy involved in it. But I think the only way to really learn is to apply it to yourself. When first people first told me about that you can leave on fruits and vegetables, I was like, really? Like, okay. That's a bit what extreme. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, isn't it? No, I wasn't ever thought it was too extreme. I was really open to it because, you know, it's like my internal instincts it's like I know, I know that we can and I know that this is designed for us like as human beings. So when you apply it to yourself, you do it properly, you get the education, you do your research, you, know, you follow people that have done this for years like I've followed you and, you know, you can see that it works and nothing's ever going to work if you don't do it properly. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it could be a diet, it could be getting fit, it could be, you know, anything. It's like... You have to apply yourself properly for, to get the results that, that you ultimately want to need. This lifestyle is about abundance. It's not about just having a banana for breakfast and then a couple of lettuce leaves at night. People, I see people start on this lifestyle and they've got this, you know, bowl like that big <laughs> and it's got like four grapes in it and half a banana and, and half an orange. And they're like, oh, breakfast. Yeah. Oh, no, like awesome for trying, but you need to seriously like, Fill yourself up so you literally can't eat anymore. Yeah. And then that's how you learn where your threshold is that how much energy from carbohydrates that you need throughout your day. I just have always been a big eater. And because I've never used, I've never really had a problem with my weight up until I from about twenty one when the lifestyle caught up with me and all the drinking and stuff like that. But I've always just lived a life of just eat whatever you want. So if it's there, I'll eat it. You know, whole bag of Doritos and the whole tub of dip yeah. in my city, like at 10 o'clock in the morning. That was my smoker. You know, that was just like something I did every day. And, you know, 
massive chicken parmesan as McDonald's meals. Mm. And, and yeah. then you still want something sweet, hey, because you're like you're not getting a nutrient fix. So you need to have that savoury. It's yeah. like, where's is it? Like, I need chocolate. Like, I literally, I can't focus on anything else right now unless I get a chocolate bar. Of course, I've had times at the start where I didn't eat enough. But you fall back into the, you know, you've got things around you or, you know, oh, you're in a meeting or you're with some friends or something and there's there's lollies or there's the, the chocolates or, you know, the bread or whatever and you do reach for it and I have done that because you're not, you, your body is not satisfied, it doesn't have enough so it's always going to reach for something else. It's it's the way we're, we're tuned. It's, you know, we live, <laughs> our instincts is like survival mode. So if we don't have enough, we're going to reach and get anything that's around us. Yeah. But yeah. when you do learn to eat enough and enough calories from carbohydrates, that doesn't happen. It's, just, su- it's such a relief. Yeah, it is. And you can just, you know, you can look at all that food and you can see the people around you just binging out and you can just be like, you know, like you feel a bit sad for them, but you feel happy that you don't have to go through that anymore and you only just want to spread the message to those people so that they don't have to go through that anymore. And it's not about, like, you know, people say, oh, you must have had eating disorder or whatever. I'm like, I guess I did because of the way I used to eat. But, you know, I, I, it wasn't an eating disorder in the way to be thin or any, you know, image control or anything like that because I never really had a problem with my weight. So... That you, that you can thrive on, on this lifestyle. Oh, doing that just, it, made, it taught me a lot about eating, you know, how to eat like more salads and stuff because I, before then, I, you know, I never used to eat any salads or fruits or anything like that. So, so you came with paleo, didn't you? Yeah, I did yeah. it for probably like six months because I was put on it. Um, yeah. You know, I was told by my doctors and stuff that I should try it and, oh, this would be good for your health and everything, like eating organic meats. So, yeah, I thought I was really under something, but, yeah, I like I lost a lot of weight because I wasn't eating enough and I just remember always, like, I just would always have sore stomach and my body never digested the meat well at all, you know, and I was always like, oh, I'm going to eat these, you know, five portions of meat every day, like literally gagging at the thought because I never was a massive you know, big steak eater or anything like that. So, yeah, going from paleo, just, oh. Yeah, you would have, like, you're probably, um, you know, largely losing weight because you were sick. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was really sick and, and, you know, you could see it in my skin and everything like that, but it was because, you know, you just have, they just teach you, like, you just have these small portions of salad, you know, and then this, this you know, portion of meat that's usually bigger than the salad. Um, and then because, you, you know, you cut all grains out, most carbohydrates, not that much fruit or anything like that. So you just, like, you literally just, your body's just like, what is going on? Like, I don't know how to deal with this. And you're just always searching for food and always looking around food, trying to stop yourself from eating. Yeah. Like, thinking, like, that's what turns, that's that's what causes eating disorders mm-hmm. is, is lifestyles like that where you just, you are honestly deprived all day. And you have to stop yourself from from grabbing the bread or the pasta. That's a true eating disorder. That is. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, yeah, like I get all the time, like, oh, you're anorexic and you got an, you got an eating disorder or whatever. I'm like, no way, man. Like, have you seen me eat? A big thing to remember is the truth goes through three stages. Yeah. First, it's ridiculed. Second, it's violently opposed. And then third, it's kind of just taken on as fact. Yeah. So people, as soon as they hear about this, like you said earlier, they know deep down that fruits and veggies are the answer and what we should be eating. So something clicks in their brain and they're like, whoa. But then everything that they've learned, all this conditioning comes along as well and it's just this big clash. Yeah. It's like hitting a brick wall. It's like everything you've ever taught, everything you've ever learned, everything you've ever been told has just gone to shit. Like and you just think, how, how can I deal with that? How can I deal with that education that I've had for 20-odd years? And then this girl here is doing something completely different and clearly killing it. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and living a lifestyle that, that, they, that they really wish that they could 
um, live. So that's a big thing of why people are negative because they can't honestly see themselves changing. They can't see them changing their lifestyles, getting out of their comfort zones um, and just start eating the fruit and getting rid of the burgers or yeah. getting rid of the, you know, the milk and all that sort of stuff. You obviously, you know, you're well researched, I can tell, like, and you know what you're talking about. And I just really think that you should get a YouTube channel started. <sighs> yeah. I really think you should think about that. I, I, I have thought about it so much and I'm just like, oh, I just need to, like I have thought about it a lot the last sort of couple of weeks since I've finished, you know, working at my office job because I, I really wanted to put more time and effort into this and really share the message and um, try and help educate people. So it's definitely on the cards. <laughs> so folks, just, if you want Lani to make a YouTube channel. I'm getting off you how to make videos because I have no idea. Like I'm pretty yeah. computer literate about making videos and YouTubes and stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally help you with that. I'll totally help you with that. I'm pretty, I'm an old hat at that now. I know what's going on. Yeah, but like folks, if you want Lani to start a YouTube channel, put your comments down below. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, let me know. encouragement. If there's enough encouragement, I might actually just do it. You know, I try with my blog and answer more questions. Too. Oh, yeah, what is your blog, by the way? What? Oh, it's just um 1111.tumblr.com. It's just, oh, I started it years ago. It's just like an inspirational blog yeah. Um, yeah. that I just started putting pictures up and then that's where people ended up going from my Instagram and then I just started answering questions on it about um, health. So... Yeah, you've got heaps of questions and answers there. Like, folks, yeah, definitely pop over to Lonnie's blog. I'll put the link in the description below. It's really cool. I love how you answer the questions. Like, you take a lot of time for people. Yeah, I, I do really love helping people because I know where I was at the start and I had no idea. And, you know, if I didn't have people like you with your videos and, and you know, other people that you could talk to, you know, over the internet and blogs and Instagram and stuff, like, you, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So... I know that that help is so important. So that's right. I'll just, yeah, I'll get my ass in the gear and start answering some questions. Yeah, on YouTube, man. <laughs> yes, on YouTube, so many videos. I don't even know what I would make. Like it's. Oh, we can give you some suggestions. People can put <laughs> suggestions in the comments below. Definitely, like. I have a few ideas, like off what how you know the questions that people ask me off my blog and stuff like that. But yeah, I'll definitely need to get onto that. Have you got more interviews to do or? Yeah, so I, I got inundated with interview requests um, from all over the world, from London to America, like heaps in America and then like Israel and Brazil and then obviously all Australia as well. Um, but I haven't done any yet because mm -hmm. I, I just haven't, I just haven't felt like it's just, it's right and I just feel like I don't want the media to twist and edit what I'm saying. Like, I really want to get the message out properly. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's difficult. It can be difficult. Yeah, and I just I want to do it right. I don't want to. I don't want to have to do an interview and then it's just it's not what I wanted and it's not spreading the right message or you know they've cut out things that I feel like are really important. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think when it feels right, it'll feel it'll feel right and I'll, I'll do it. But yeah. um, there's still a few on the cards that I might do this week, but we'll see. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks again for being on the show, on the Banana Girl show. <laughs> My first ever, like, appearance on, like, a... Yeah, that's so cool. I'm glad I got the first interview with you. Yes. Yeah, You're probably going to be on Alan next. I, tr <laughs> I trust you and I, you know, I, I know that you'll, you'll help, you know, you're obviously you spread this message and it's only ever going to be positive and um, yeah. so many people watch your channel, so... I think it's a I think it's a really good thing. Looking forward to the comments and yeah. all the positivity come out of this yeah. and Yeah. Keep pushing it. High cards for the win. Yeah, definitely. Go free to chase on.